Missed you, Dan. How are you, sir? Missed you bad. Yeah, well, hopefully we can get people back in the arena again and have a real dome. So for you this season, Coach, you bring Josh, Aaron, and Taj, and I kind of wanted to start there, the leadership of these three gentlemen and why they're the proper representation for Syracuse this year. You know, let me, let me start with this. Taj has been an amazing uh, player for us. Came in as a young man, battled uh, an upperclassman, and ended up becoming a starter his true freshman year. And uh, if things go right this year, he's going to have an opportunity to be the leading wide receiver in the history of Syracuse football. And Syracuse history goes back a long way. And there's been a bunch of not only fantastic collegiate wide receivers, but NFL wide receivers. And for him to be, have an opportunity to be in that light, I felt like uh, he deserved the right to be here. When I talk about Josh Black and I talk about Aaron Service, uh, there's no doubt that they're leaders on our football team. But the thing I really do appreciate about that class is that the six super seniors that are coming back to uh, help lead this team and to uh, have the redemption from the last year that we have is so important. And uh, there's no way we'd be able to bridge uh, the youth on this football team with the season that we're, t we're going to have and we're trying to have without the uh, super seniors coming back. All six of those, those guys, they have their degrees. All six of those guys could have started their lives. All six of those guys could have had shots uh, in NFL camps. But they decided to come back in and do one more year because they just something just didn't feel right with them. And their attitude is the attitude that I want to radiate, not only throughout the football team, but throughout the staff and throughout the community. And I will give them all the power I have to have the type of season that they want to have at Syracuse. Coach, we'll turn our attention to the right about midway through. Uh, Ewan McCreeth, Herb FM Sports Radio. Coach, I want to talk about the big boys up front. Only two teams in the nation gave up more sacks than you uh, last season. But what are your expectations for this year uh, with your offensive line? I think the first thing is we need to call it exactly what it is. We had major injuries, uh, domino effect of injuries in the offensive line, and most of them not on the football field. Most of them happening walking around campus, just fluke things. And when you're playing nine football games with uh, your fullback playing guard so that you can be one of, I believe, two ACC teams that played every entire game and uh, never had a stoppage because of COVID in their program, you know, you're going to have some difficulties. Now, we're not happy with those numbers. There's no doubt about that, and that needs to change. But when you talk about the effort that that offensive line put in and the people who were unselfish, Chris Elmore, other people who changed positions to give us the best opportunity we could to keep those guys upright and to keep us functioning, I really do appreciate their efforts. Appreciate their efforts. Uh, you know, we've had some changes and we've got some different coaches at some different positions, and, but I think the main difference is going to be is that those guys are healthy and we're not going to be having a a rotation of a bunch of young guys in there with some older guys. We'll have an older group, and they'll be ready to go. And it, all, it always starts with the O-line, and it always starts with the defensive line. And you can't be good in football if you're not good at those two positions. So hopefully we've got the health that we need to have the season that we want. Same side, same sight line, Coach. How you doing, Coach? Uh, Corlin Griffin with a three-point conversion. Uh, there's a rarity of NCAA football, black football coaches, and you're one of the better ones uh, definitely in the ACC. Can you speak on that impact and what being an African-American coach in college football means to you? You know, every day uh, I want to be known as a football coach. Don't take this. Watch how I say this. I want to be known as a football coach, a good football coach, and I appreciate you saying that. There's no doubt when I look in the mirror and I wake up in the morning, I see an African-American staring back at me. And the responsibility is to make sure that the things that I do in this position allows other people to have an opportunity to enjoy and embrace the same profession. And it, it gets difficult sometimes, you know, sometimes just like, wow, I, I really would like to do that, but I can't do that. But you got to understand that not only are you 
doing it for your family and your university and your community, but you're also doing it for others. So I am not perfect. I'm not always right. I try to be good as much as I can <laughs> and not bad, but and, you know, there's no doubt that you, you, you make sure you cross T's and dot I's because you want those opportunities to happen to other people like me to have the same opportunities that I had. Let's go back to Dan in the first row. Do you know five seasons, five seasons in, what's the assessment for you as you look back on these five years at Syracuse as you head into year number six, those big points that maybe you wanted to hit at this point, and if you feel like you've gotten to some of those pillars? You know, I, I think the biggest thing is, is that, you know, we had a bad season and we've had a really, really good season. I don't think we're as bad as we were in the bad season, and maybe we're not as good as we were in the good one. But the thing that I really want is consistency. And I want to be consistently good, not occasionally great. If we can find that consistency, I think we can find the support and the foundation that we need, not only uh, for, the, for the university, but uh, also for the community. It's really important to me that they have a football team that they can be proud of, and that's very, very important. Back to the right side, we'll go back to Ewan. Coach, you open up against a stingy Ohio team. Uh, this is an Ohio team that's made bowl appearances 10 out of their last 11 seasons. What challenges do they present to you? It's huge now that uh, Frank Solich has retired. Uh, I have a, an unbelievable Frank Solich story. He's an amazing coach. He's been an amazing competitor. I think back to when uh, I want to say I was the offensive coordinator at the University of Arizona in 1988, and I want to say it was 1988. And in the uh, Holiday Bowl, we were playing uh, Nebraska, and Frank Solich was the defensive coordinator. And it was an amazing game. He's a He's a fabulous defensive coach. And uh, we ended up winning in the very last drive, a one minute drive at the very end where a, a walk on uh, Brad Brennan uh, caught a ball in the back of the end zone. Now he had a scholarship at the time that he caught it, but, uh, but uh, before the season started, he was a walk on, an unbelievable catch. And uh, Nebraska got the ball back and almost won, but the defense ended up stopping them. But we came down the elevator, and uh, we were, I was talking about the drive. And then I said, and then there's like 30 yards. I can't even remember what happened. And then a, a voice in the back of the elevator said, you did this, and it was a scramble. You did this, and it was a quick out. You did this on a draw, which is a heck of a call. And that's how you got down there. I mean, bang, bang, bang. And I turned around and I said, who is, and it was Frank Solich. <laughs> and from that day, we've had an unbelievable relationship. I respect the heck out of him. And uh, it's gonna make it, they've always been a good football team. They've always had his personality. But it's gonna be more difficult because now they have a new head coach and a new personality. And uh, you know, we haven't played them. So it, it's gonna be a, a difficult game and I'm, and I'm sure they'll try to win that one for, uh, for their new coach and their old coach, and it just makes them a lot more dangerous. So I have a lot of respect for the Ohio Bobcats. I have tremendous respect for Frank Solich, and I'm sure that uh, their new coach will do a fabulous job in the opening game. Coach, we'll go up the center aisle to your left. Hey, Dino, John Eads with Orange Fizz. This is going to be your deepest group of running backs this season with Sean, Jarvion, and Abdul coming back from opt-outs, and then Cooper Lutz as well. How will that change your offensive game plan and schematics this year? First of all, you better not leave out Cooper Lutz. I mean, that was the guy that House called Notre Dame at the, at the end of the season when we got some of our offensive linemen back. Um, they're very, very deep. And uh, the coolest thing about having that type of depth, and we do not have it everywhere, There's, we just don't is to see the way they compete in practice and the uh, maturity that their position handles their business. It's, it's, a, it's rare. It's really rare. And I, I think nothing but good thoughts about that group. And they need to come to work every day because the, the guys they're competing with, there's some cats that aren't going to miss a day. And I'm telling you right now, you can throw some of those guys in a hat and mix them up, and they're all about the same. There's some special ones in there, 
but I, I think we can win with every name that you mention uh, at that position. They're a really, really talented group. Question will come from the gentleman seated next to him. Hey, Coach, Matt Bonaparte, Orange Fizz. Uh, Trill, Cisco, and Iffy are gone. Do you expect the young DBs to take any sort of step back with the, with the older guys out of the way? I, they better take a step forward, <laughs> unless they're backpedaling. No, this is an opportunity. They got a chance to play early. You know, uh, out of those the three guys you mentioned, uh, Iffy was the only one that finished the year, if my memory serves me correctly, although, you know, last year's the injuries were so numerous. But um, they better take a step forward. Those young people have had a lot of playing time. Uh, the thing that I'm excited about is they've had an opportunity to change their body. And now it's going to be one of those deals where they have some knowledge because they did play and they were out there and reps make you better. But take that new body with the reps that you learned and let's see if we can get a, a different type of production uh, out of that group. And it's going to be a group that's going to be around for a while. There's only two things are going to happen. They're going to stay really long and play a lot and graduate or they're going to get really good and probably leave early. Either way is good. Coach Dan's got your last question. Coach, name, image, and likeness is obviously something that's front and center right now. How have you addressed that with the student athletes and what's your overall take on moving forward knowing that this is a real thing for collegiate athletics right now? The first thing I, I talk to them about is I'm really excited for them. It's, it's new. It's not only is it new for them, but it's new for coaches. You know, we really, we've probably had two or three things in the last six or seven months in coaching it, for changes, the more changes than we've had in the last 30 years. So some of it we've got to adjust. We've got to adapt and improvise and make sure that we're changing with the time, so to speak. But uh, one of the first things I said in a team meeting is, I said, I'm going to teach you guys about contracts and what happens when you sign your name to something and it's legally binding. And just to make sure that when they're going out there and they're exercising their right to some of these opportunities that they're not getting tied up in a situation where it could cost them later. We are going to have, they're going to have classes. There's three classes that we're going to have. We're going to teach for them to help them, help them with their brand. We're going to, um, how do I say this, introduce them to certain people that we think can help them if they don't have their own type, type of representation. Just people that are not to represent them, but people who can talk about representation and what they're looking for. And then um, we're gonna have to wait and see how this thing goes. I think there's some schools that are obviously way ahead of other schools, but I don't think that we're gonna be far behind. We're just a little slow to go. And once it gets going, State of New York's a big state and it has a lot of people. I'm sure that we, there's enough uh, name, image, and likeness for everyone.